hey, sorry, I can't be there today. I have jury duty. I have to go do my civic duty. So, um, but you're in really good hands with Jill, with our sub today. Um, she is great. So um, you've already done a warm up where you found some inverses. And what I want you to do now is I just want to remind you about graphing. If I need to sketch a graph of an inverse, move this down a little bit. So I have this function uh, right here and uh, I'm going to freeze here for a minute. So my, my little face is going to freeze. So lucky, lucky you. So um, as I find this inverse, the inverse of this, what I'm going to do is just find some points on it and notice that like this is the point zero two, this is the point three three, this is the point six four, this point right here is nine five. And remember what inverses do is they switch the input and the output, the x and y switch. So zero two would go through the point two zero, three three is at three three, six four would be at four six, five nine would be like somewhere way up here. But anyways, there's just a sketch of the inverse of that. And remember, they're gonna be gonna reflect across that line right there, that y equals x line. So that's that's how I can graph them. Okay, so that's familiar. So my face is gonna disappear again here. So we're gonna dig into a little bit of an idea of, of an inverse and when an inverse does works and when it doesn't work. Oops, sorry. Okay. So um, if I have something like uh, 2x plus 5, if I go to find that inverse, the inverse of that is going to end up being, um, let's make this uh, 2x minus 6. That'll be a little, a little handier. Um, the inverse of that will end up being 1 half x minus 3 or x minus 6 over 2, same thing. And so notice what happens with this. If, if say, I plug a 5 into here, I get 2 times 5 plus 6, 10 plus 6, 16. And then if I take that 16 and plug it into its inverse, 1 half times 16 uh, minus 3, 8 minus 3 is 5. I get my 5 back, right? These, This function and this function undo each other. That makes them inverses of each other. So let's talk about a case where it doesn't necessarily uh, work all the time. Let's think about x squared, y equals x squared. Um, so if I say x is 5, and I plug it into this, y equals 5 squared, which is 25. So that's great. Um, so how about if I plug a negative 5 into here? x equals negative 5. So negative 5 squared, negative times negative is positive, y also equals 25. So notice that in this function, I have two inputs, uh, 5 and negative 5, different inputs that actually both lead to the same output. They both give the same answer. Now, um, most folks, like if you ask them what's the inverse of x squared, and notice the question mark, they would say it's the square root of x. Square root undoes, undoes it. Um, but here's here's the problem with square root of x uh, being the inverse of, of 1 half. I'm going to take 25 and plug it into this. y equals the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So notice what this does is this only gives me that back. It doesn't give me the negative 5 back. So if I, if I said my answer was 25, there's no way for me to know if it came from a negative 5 or it came from a positive 5. I'm not, I can't undo x squared with certainty. I can't undo it to know exactly where this came from. So x squared actually doesn't have a straight inverse. It's not invertible. So here's what we can do. Uh, we, we, can, we can do a little, a little trick, a little sleight of hand for it. Um, before I do, I want to get at this idea. And what one to one means is um, each, every single input um, has exactly one output. And the other way as well. Each output has exactly one. 
input. So notice x squared is not 1 to 1 because 5 and negative 5 go to 1. This is, this is, you can think of this as 2 to 1. There's two things that go to this one thing. In order to be 1 to 1, it can only be like, if I plug in a 5, I'm only going to get one answer. And that answer only came from 5. 1 to 1. So if a function is 1 to 1, then we can invert it. Then it's invertible. That's a really big idea. So you might even want to pause the video right now and think about that idea. Talk about it. And actually what I'd like to do, turn to somebody who's sitting by and articulate why, um, what, what one to one means. Okay, pause it now. All right, so I'm going to assume you're back now. So let's, let's look at um, a graph like this. This is an x squared uh, a parabola. It's an x squared graph. This I can tell is not one to one. Uh, this this little thing right here is gonna is gonna freeze again. So um, the way I can tell it's not one to one is notice if I input a one, it outputs a three, but if I input a negative one, it also outputs a three. See the problem is that this thing doubles back on itself. Great. So thinking about that then. Um, this doesn't have an inverse, but what I can do is I can make it so part of it is invertible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to find its low point, and I'm just going to take just one branch of it. So what I want to say here is, notice my x value is 0 here. I want to say x is greater than or equal to 0. So what I'm doing here is I'm limiting the domain. And so that means that this part of the graph, I ignore. So um, I'm going to close this up and come back over to here. And so notice that here's my, here's my function right here, my graph. What I'm going to say is I'm going to limit the name so x is greater than or equal to 0. And so if you'll notice uh, what's going on when I, when I say this right here, x is greater than or equal to 0, my x values have to be greater than or equal to zero. So I won't accept any negative x values. I won't plug them into this to get y values at all. So notice now that if I do this with this function, I limit the domain like this. Uh, this is going to freeze again. <laughs> so if I limit the domain like this, so x is only greater than or equal to 0. Now this is a one-to-one -one function because like, I don't have any duplicates. It doesn't double back on itself. So there's something that I can do to a function to fix it. So let's take a look at this one and uh, freeze this ugly face right here. So if I want to limit the domain here, See, it doubles back on itself. I want to make sure that it, does, it doesn't double back on itself anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick this part right here. I'm just going to say everything to the right of where the vertex is at. So notice here, x is 2. So x could be greater than or equal to 2. If I let x be all those things greater than or equal to 2, and I only take half of the parabola, now I can find an inverse for that half. So notice my domain, my inputs, I limited them x greater than or equal to 2. Just tear the parabola in half and take the x values for it. So I'm going to go back over here. So what that would mean is what I would do is I put this domain on it. x is greater than or equal to 2. And then notice I only take uh, half of this. And now it's invertible. Now I, can, now I can do the inverse for that. All right, so that is... A pretty big idea um, and I want to take this right here and I'm going to uh, I'm going to actually find the reciprocal I find the inverse for that algebraically so I'm going to go back to this page so 
So my function, I think, was, uh, no, it wasn't that. So my function was, um, that. And I could tell from the graph that I needed to only limit, only take half of it. So I said x is greater than or equal to 2. Hey, notice it's the thing that makes the thing I'm squaring 0. It's the value that makes this 0, because that's going to be the lowest point on it. So I limit the domain. Now I can have an inverse for this. And the way I'm going to find the inverse is the way that we find inverses. Switch x and y. and solve for y. So subtract 1 from both sides. And I can undo squaring by square rooting. So I'm going to square root both sides. Whoops, uh, that turned into a 2. Sorry about that. That should have been a 1. I hope you all yelled at me for that. And then uh, add 2 to both sides. And what I want you to notice is when I add 2 to this, it's outside of the square root. So it's x minus 1 plus 2. That is the inverse of this as long as I do that sort of uh, limit on the domain. All right, so that idea of limiting the domain, only, we only have to worry about it when a function doubles back on itself. If a function doesn't double back on itself, we don't have to worry about it. So for example, if I had something like uh, 3x plus 5 over 2, that doesn't double back on itself. It's fine. I don't, ha I don't have to worry about it. Or even if I had something like um, x cubed, although this looks like it's flat here, it's, it's not. It's not flat here. So this is always going up. So this does not double back on itself. It would have to come, it would have to come up in order for me to limit the domain. And I would just limit the domain right there if it happened. All right. So I know that that is a, um, whoa, hey. I know that that is, um, is a big idea, but it's, it's an important idea. So you're going to get some practice on it. Ask lots of questions. Look at the key. And uh, next time that we meet, um, there might be a quiz. So anyways, good job. Sorry this had to be from video. Have a good day. Be good to each other. Figure this out. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.